Hope Well Chinono live streamed his arrest, trying to draw attention to his fate. Ten or so men burst into his house by force and told him to put the phone down. Since then, he stayed behind bars, charged with inciting violence, having called for protests against the government. He risks five years inside. With mass protests planned on July 31st, the government is keen to avoid further public unrest. What we are dealing with in this country is people that threaten that there should be a new gov there will be a new government come 1 August. A new government which is not based on our own constitutional process. Our country is a nation and it has got security concerns. It would be nice for every country out there to mind their own business and respect Zimbabwe's internal affairs. The second part of his message there clearly addressed at the US. This week, Zimbabwe's ruling party branded Washington's ambassador a thug and threatened his expulsion. Many Zimbabweans are denouncing the growing oppression. Around 60 activists have been arrested since January. These women were reportedly kidnapped, tortured and sexually assaulted back in May. Opposition figures are saying enough is enough. Zimbabwe has become a hot spot of human rights abuses and crimes against humanity. Images of incidents of police brutality and apparent arbitrary arrests have flooded Zimbabwean social media. Little appears to have changed since the time of Mugabe. It's not a new thing. It has always been there in Zimbabwe. Uh, abductions have been recorded in their numbers. But what we see now is government taking advantage of the COVID-19 lockdown. You know, people are not in the streets. Therefore, the government is maneuvering, using that opportunity to, to, to lock down rights. Because of restrictions on movement put in place to control the spread of COVID-19, Zimbabweans do not officially have the right to gather and protest. But anger on the streets is such that July 31st could be a major event.